Good morning, everyone. Christ be with you. I'm glad to see you all here today with us. Um, thank you for joining us here on Zoom and on Facebook. Um, this is a bit different for us today. We made a last minute decision yesterday evening to not worship in the sanctuary today because um, blowing and drifting and all that, making roads even worse. Um, hopefully it was the right decision to make. And uh, we're apologize to anyone who, who would normally be in the sanctuary. Um, little miscommunications here and there. I had uh, called and left a message for Martha, our, our Martha Denkenberger, our organist, and she didn't hear the message. And I realized I hadn't heard back from her. So I called her again this morning and she was almost to the church. So I felt bad about that. But Karen, I also apologize to you. I'm seeing you here on Zoom. Karen was supposed to sing for us today and I asked Martha to call Karen. And so obviously Karen didn't get the message till this morning too. So my apologies to you. Um, because we are here at home and because there was short notice, I didn't have time to find uh, hymns to download. And the last time we did it, we didn't have great sound. We had some issues with that. So we're not gonna be having any hymns today. Um, I do have a video that I'm gonna share for special music and I'll tell you about that a little bit later when we get to that part in the ceremony, <laughs> in the service. Um, and we'll share that together. Um, I do want to share with you that uh, joys and concerns, we have a joy today. We have a birthday today. It is Linda Gardner's birthday. And Linda, any chance you would um, show yourself and just say a quick hi so people who are watching can see you? You need to unmute yourself too. There she is. Martha's been at my house with cupcakes and grapes. <laughs> Martha was going to surprise Linda with a coffee hour in her honor, including a, a, a whole display of cupcakes uh, to, to celebrate. But a big happy birthday to you. And again, if we were in the sanctuary, we would all sing to you, but I'm not going to do a song. It would be trying to chime in here. Um, but happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> You'll get your birthday card on Tuesday instead of today. <laughs> no problem. Okay, which I also realized as I was putting my stuff together this morning. <laughs> All righty. Um, and Linda, do I have it right? Was it Bill Davis that you told me? Yes, that passed away. Yes. Yes. So our, our hearts go out to the Davis family on Bill's passing. He's a friend of the, the congregation. And so please keep his family in your thoughts and prayers. Are there any other joys or concerns that we can lift up today? Other than safe travels for anybody who is out on the road and might get caught in uh, drifts or whatever. Um, any others? Um, always uh, in the last few weeks, please keep the Ukraine in your prayers. It's getting worse and worse with the, embar the uh, bombardments that are happening there. I've heard of a, a hospital that got targeted this week and uh, the children's ward, which is near and dear to my niece's heart because she works in an ICU and seeing these little ones hurting was really bad for her as well. My good news that I get to share is that my fifth great nephew was born yesterday. <laughs> Eli Kent uh, came into the world and uh, it's a joy to have him and can't wait to meet him. So, all right, let us, uh, we're gonna begin our, our service with the call to worship led by Anne. And then we are gonna share in our Lenten meditation. Yeah. Okay. Do not worry over what you do not possess. We trust in God. Do not fear that too much may be asked of you. God is with us. Do not be afraid of what the future will bring. God will lead. Only break open your hearts that God may enter in. We open our hearts to God. Come, let us worship God. In the sanctuary, we have um, seven candles, seven purple candles and a white Christ candle behind them. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of that. Um, and uh, with our Lenten meditation, Sunday by Sunday, we, we are extinguishing a candle of the seven. So imagine there are seven candles, seven purple candles and six out of the seven are lit right now. On Sunday morning, 
a brief space of time, we leave behind the world of home and work and school, the world where we have our list of things to do, activities to participate in, tasks to complete. We come here this morning seeking something else. We come here seeking a shift from the ordinary to the sacred, from doing to being. I invite you to rise. Let go of your list. Recall that it is the season of Lent. Remember the parable of the sower. The sower throws the seed and where it lands determines if it will grow or not grow. Think of it this way. Think of the season of Lent as the sower, the time when seeds of faith are thrown with special intensity, a time when God calls to us in a low, urgent voice. Listen, Jesus is being drawn to Jerusalem. Where is God calling you? What is God calling you to do? Take a few moments in silence to meditate. Imagine as we extinguished the light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of violence in the world and to the earth. And a second candle is extinguished. Please join me in prayer. Nick. Loving God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, may we be open to your presence. Give us the strength to make the changes that are needed in our lives and the courage to take on the work of transforming the world. Amen. Normally we would be singing praise to the Lord, the Almighty, one of my favorites, <laughs> but we're going to move past that now. Anne? Here is our call to confession. We are people of worth and value when we honestly acknowledge the shame and guilt of our lives, there is a possibility of transformation. May we put our trust in the accepting grace of Christ as we pray together saying, God of mercy, we are at times a people easily given to despair. When we look into the future, we often see endings and not beginnings. We confess that we can get entangled in the problems of this world and have trouble seeing hope for the future. We grow accustomed to sighing and in our cynicism, we evade your call to new life. Forgive us our lack of faith and restore in us a trust in your power to create new beginnings where we are not able to imagine them. Amen. Would you take a few moments for your own private prayer of confession? We are assured of God's pardon. In Christ, we are forgiven and made new. Let us place our trust in God's promise of new and abundant life. I'm going to try to do this a cappella. You all join me at home if you wish. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen. And I just realized I sang a version that you all don't normally know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Nick, if you can let me have a screen. I'm going to share with you all a, um, a video. This is a prayer from a Ukrainian uh, church group. 
So with all going on in their lives right now, I thought this would be appropriate. Печалі, біди чи тривоги, коли сил немає, щоб далі йти, я в щирі молитві звертаюсь до Бога, бо знаю, Господь мій є в силі спасти. Мряви проходжу, то твердо я вірю, Господь при мені. Лиш ньому я захист і спокій знаходжу. We're at our scripture reading. Is that right? I don't have the bullets. In the our prayer of <laughs> I'm sorry. That's uh, okay. Yeah. 
Our opening scripture reading for today is Psalm 27. And Nick's pulling up the prayer of illumination. There you go. Oh, okay. Prayer of illumination first. God of wonder, long ago, you inspired women and men to put pen to paper. As people experienced from it, your eternal word, scripture was born. Open us to your word this day as it is contained in these words. Inspire us, comfort us, challenge us to greater faithfulness. Amen. Now scripture. Okay. <laughs> Psalm 27 is our first scripture reading. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my, hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. The heart says of you, seek his face. Your face Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Thank you, Anne. Wandering Aramean was my ancestor. Abram, the original wandering Aramean, and his wife, Sarah, Sarai, packed up the Winnebago for a retirement journey. At a time when they should be relaxing on, in front porch rockers with grandchildren on their knees, they headed for the open road. Not for some extended sightseeing holiday, but because Yahweh God called them to go. God's offer was pretty tempting with promises to make a great nation of them with uh, land on which to settle that nation. Land and offspring appealed to Abram and Sarai because even though they were pretty well off by their retirement years, they didn't have any children. There were no grandchildren to bounce on their arthritic knees. But the couple took God at God's word, gathered up their earthly belongings, and took to the road. A few years have passed now, and Abram and Sarai, their names haven't been changed yet to Abraham and Sarah, they have prospered despite famine, despite unwanted attentions from the king of Egypt, despite battles raging among the new neighbors. Most recently, Abram helped the king of Salem, Melchizedek, defeat his enemies. Yet Abram wouldn't accept any of the plunder as reward. Abram and Sarai have prospered in many ways, but still no children. Listen now, as Abram has a vision of God. After this, the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. 
But Abram said, Sovereign Yahweh, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. But the word of Yahweh came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son of your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed Yahweh, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am Yahweh, who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, Sovereign Yahweh, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So Yahweh said to him, bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham, Abram brought all of these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then Yahweh said to him, know for certain that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to read this next part. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire, part, fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Years, Abram and Sarai longed for a child. In those days, there was no belief in um, immortality or life after death. When you died, you died. Be immortal then, to be remembered, to live on after you died, required children to tell the story of your life and to live out your legacy on the lands that you owned. When Sarai and Abram were past hope for a future, God comes along with great promises of offspring and land. How wonderful. But more years have passed and there's still no baby in Sarai's womb. They're waiting and waiting and waiting. What are you waiting for? What do you long for in your present or, or the future? Retirement or promotion? <laughs> the warmth and promise of spring? I hear it's gonna be in the 60s or 70s this week. Good test results to come from the doctor. That someone special to call you. <laughs> Those extra pounds to magically disappear. An end to the war in Ukraine and no more war beyond it. And an end to rising inflation. Maybe these are your worries or what you're waiting for. I am taken back to childhood and remember it being filled with waiting, literally waiting after some activity at school or church for someone to come and pick me up and drive me home. Figuratively, always waiting to be old enough to do whatever neato, nifty thing my older brother and sisters were able to do that I couldn't, like riding the big rides at the amusement park or staying up past 9, 9 p.m. and to sit in the front seat of the car. Either way, I didn't have a choice but to wait, and there seemed to be lots of it. With all the waiting we do as individuals, waiting in lines, waiting for traffic light, waiting for children or parents or spouses, waiting for tax refunds, what are we waiting for or longing for as a community of faith? Now, this is not meant to be a rhetorical question. If we were in the sanctuary, I'd ask you to call out your answers. So anybody who's here on Zoom, if you want to share something that you are 
waiting for or longing for or hoping for for our church, our community? Unmute yourselves and tell me what it is. Anybody want to share? You're all being quiet and shy. No? <laughs> okay. Lisa, this is Chris. I'll share. Please. Uh, just uh, uh, the PNC had our first gathering Thursday night, and we're beginning to form and we're beginning to plan to move forward. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Okay, great. What else? Anybody? That was a really good and positive waiting and longing for. Maybe some of your waiting and longing is for us for like more people in the pews or more people to carry on. I've often heard people say they wish there were more youth and young people in our, in our congregation. Like most churches, we would love all our money issues to be resolved. Maybe you're waiting or longing for somebody else to see. These longings for our community and for ourselves are all things we are waiting for. And they amount to one thing, the hope for a future, the hope of a good future, the hope that things will work out all right. In this, we're no different than Sarai and Abram, longing for children to be their future. God made a promise to them. When God comes a second time, not surprising that Abram protests God's declaration of a reward. Abram's been living out his faith, but he also has his doubts. What good is the reward of land if there are no descendants to live on it? God has promised, but can God's promises be trusted? Abram must have wondered. Was he a fool to leave the riches of his home in Haran and Ur, to travel to the sometimes desolate land of the Canaanites? Promises are hard to see when you're uprooted and displaced, and not just by geography. Abram had questions now that God had begun the conversation with this vision. In his willingness to speak his heart before God, Abram speaks for us. We too have our doubts and questions, even as we live out our faith. Abram actually argues with God, as we do. His was no easy acceptance of faith. You know what, though? God is okay with that. There was no lightning bolt to strike Abram dead. No earthquake swallowed him whole. God didn't bellow, how dare you ask me questions or challenge my decrees? God is patient. God waits much better than we do. Waiting and encouraging Abram and us to come to believe. God gives assurance after assurance. See the stars and count them. That's how numerous your descendants will be. Here is all the land I will give you. Patient. Yet another, how do I know this will happen, comes from Abram. In response to that demand comes this whole covenant ritual with the animals and the smoking pot. It's more than a little gruesome for our 21st century sensibilities. We who buy our meat in packages at the grocery store and only witness butchering in terms of a well-cooked Thanksgiving turkey, don't like bloody scenes involving cut up animal parts and those exposed innards attracting scavenging vultures. Ugh. All indications are though that this was a very ancient covenant ceremony. Those making promises with one another would split an animal in two, then both walked between the pieces. In Jeremiah 34, Jeremiah tells the results if either party didn't live up to their part of the bargain. Walking through the halves of the animal was like saying, may I be as dead as this cow if I don't fulfill my promises. Funny thing here though, both parties don't pass between the animals. 
only God does. God's the one making all the promises, first in words and now in actions. God is putting God's self on the line. God deeply enters into the covenant with, to such a depth that God even allows for an experience of suffering and death. God places all of God's self into this relationship with Abram and his family. God's promises may move through dark and, and complex times, like the 400 years of Abram's children being slaves in Egypt. But God's promises are enduring, everlasting. Down through time, God gives even more promises, new promises, adding more shape to the future. There's the giving of Torah to the Israelites. There are royal promises to David and his descendants. And there's the promise of God's son. Through the incarnation of Jesus into the world, God once again puts God's self on the line, being willing to go through the depths of suffering and death in order to bring us into relationship with God, in order to shape a future for all believers to come. Friends, one of the faith issues we have to grapple with is that God's promises came with a cost. Instead of animals split open on the ground, we have Christ on the cross. Just as with a covenant with Abram, God takes on all the requirements and the cost of that covenant. Because of a life lived, a cross and an empty tomb, we have the assurance of a future in God's hands. A good future, a future with hope. Things will work out all right even if they don't work out the way we imagine or want. See, we know this promise maker. We know that God can be trusted. The present may feel exhausted and barren, but God can give us visions to surprise our old realities. Walter Brueggemann says of Abram that he came to a moment of belief when he permitted God to not be a hypothesis about the future, but the voice around which his life was organized. Faith is about living in the delay, actively waiting on God's promises and living as if they've already been fulfilled, or they have. Psalm 27 ends, wait for the Lord. I believe we shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wait for God, friends. Be strong and let your hearts take courage. Wait for God. Amen. If we were singing, we would be singing an old hymn from the red hymnal, God Will Take Care of You. And I'm just gonna read the first verse and refrain. Be not dismayed with air betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you, God will take care of you. Thank you, screen share please. Let us join together in our affirmation of faith which comes from the brief statement of faith of the PCUSA. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba Father, like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
please join your hearts with me now in prayer. God, our God, you have called us to be a people on the move, traveling light, dying to live, ready to lose ourselves for the sake of the world. You have called us to be a people with a purpose, traveling without a map, traveling to where we are led, sustained by your spirit, committed to the gospel for the hope of the world. You have called us, your people, to be the church. But we are a church with problems, too strong for the weak, too staid for the young, respectable for the poor, too divided for mission, too devoted to our buildings, too obsessed with our own lives to think of the lives of others, too unsure of our message to speak to the world. God, move us on our journey from where we are to where you want us to go. Open our eyes on the way to the people of different cultures, continents, and countries who can bring color to our lives. Take us on our journey from where we are to what you want us to be so that we become a community where all are welcomed and no one is excluded. All are valued and no one is made to feel inadequate. All are forgiven and no one is ashamed to belong. All are encouraged and no one is too hurt to come among us. Lead us on our journey from who we are to who you want us to be, so that patience is built into us, kindness is assumed in us, gentleness is a part of us, compassion flows from us, truth is second nature to us, and the commitment of love is part of us. Let us gladly, go on the journey towards Easter, the journey toward death and resurrection. Let us journey in the peace and power of the spirit. God in community, holy and one, gather our hearts now as we gather our voices to pray as Jesus taught us saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, all that we have and all we are belongs to God. It is with joy that we give of our time, our energy and our resources. Our um, March mission focus is for the pastor's discretionary, pastor's discretionary fund and for local needs, all of us help people in times of hardship and emergency, whether it be food, gas, um, rent, heat, however we can be of assistance both within the congregation and in the community. So your giving as always is appreciated. Um, since we're not in the sanctuary today, if you would like to go to our website and just click on giving, um, you can do so through there. We appreciate that. Please join your hearts with me in our prayer of dedication. Oh God, our light that keeps us safe, how good and kind you are. Today, we bring to you our thanks for the many ways in which you bless us. We give our offerings of money and share our many gifts to help build your realm on earth. Amen. Closing hymn is another old favorite from the Red Hymnal, The Solid Rock. My hope was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Now, friends, our benediction. May love shape its own eternal ritual in you. May covenant hone its own home in you. May stardust reveal the ancient promise in you. And may, that, may the God of that love, that covenant, and that stardust show you the gift you are to the world. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining here on Zoom and in Facebook today. We will be back in the sanctuary next week, God willing. 
uh, don't imagine that the weather is going to be any problem then. Thank you all and God bless.